Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I'm gonna be talking through all the steps that you need to know when it comes to buying a house. Now, if you've been following my channel, you would have known that I was in the process of buying my first property. And I'm so pleased to say that as of a few days ago, this happened. Yes me and my partner finally got the keys to our first house and we are incredibly excited thankful and so grateful to be in the position that we are in now it is a big renovation project hence why we're not moving in until the very beginning of next year but i wanted to take this opportunity to go through what my experience has been like when buying my first house especially as it happened during the very peak of the coronavirus pandemic because believe it or not at the very beginning of this process i had absolutely no idea what I was doing and I know I'm not alone so I wanted to create a video where I go through the entire process step by step to obviously help people that are in a similar position but also inspire people that they can do the same as well so without further ado I'm Kozan from Financial Madness helping you be better with your money So before we get into the topic, I just want to say a big sorry for not being able to release a video last Monday. Being a small YouTuber, my luck did eventually run out because not only did I record this very video that I'm about to present once, I recorded it twice. One ended up being corrupted and the other had some major lighting issues. And obviously third time's a charm and I'm so glad to be able to show you this video. I've been so excited about this. And so yeah, I'm not going to hold it any further. Enjoy. So to start off with, we have to trail back about three years ago where I essentially just sat my partner down and I let him know that I wanted to take buying a house a lot more seriously because this was always something we discussed off the cuff. And I saw our general future direction going this way anyway, as with most couples, but we never really put any action towards it. So I wanted to take this opportunity to actually sit down and put some effort into creating an action plan. Now, this is what I call the budgeting and planning phase because I I knew this process wasn't going to be easy. Now, the first thing to do in this phase is to scour the market and look at all the different properties and the different price points. Now, we had a starting point in the fact that we knew that we wanted to stay in the very west of London because it just made sense for just both of our jobs. So that's how we started. We started looking at the different properties within the different boroughs of West London. And the kind of things we were trying to aim for was either a two bed flat masonette or even a two bed house if we could afford one. So yeah, we trawled through all of the estate agent websites such as Rightmove, Zoopla, Dexter's and there's many more as well. And this gave us a rough idea of how much money we needed to actually buy a property within the different boroughs. And the number we came to was around about the 425, 450k mark. So the next part of the phase was to find out if there were any schemes available to us as first time buyers to help us buy our first property. Now there were two schemes available at this point in time. They were the lifetime ISA option and the help to buy equity loan. Now to cut a long story short, we ended up going with the lifetime ISA option. We were slightly concerned about the 450k limit that this scheme has because based on our research, we found that the property that we wanted was going to be around the 425, 450 mark, which is pretty much sitting on the bubble of the maximum limit for this scheme. But the reason why we didn't go with the equity loan, which has a higher limit of 600k, was because we weren't really a fan of the government scheme and we were playing around with the idea of potentially renting out the property in the future and with the government equity loan that adds a little bit more complications so we thought the lifetime ISA option fit our needs the most so once we had an understanding of how much money the property that we wanted was going to cost us I created a spreadsheet that covers all the costs that you need to know to make sure you are on the property ladder because believe it or not there is a whole host of costs outside of the deposit which I think most of us know that we have to get and that's typically around 10% which is what we were aiming for but yeah there's so many other costs such as mortgage fees, broker fees, solicitor fees, surveyor fees, stamp duty tax. So all of which I had absolutely no idea what was going to cost us. So this part of the research was really vital. If you want to see that very spreadsheet or you want to actually even use it to see what your ideal property is likely going to cost you, I'll put a link in the description box down below. I also did a video on this earlier on. So do check that video out if you want more information. So once we had an understanding of what our target goal needed to be, which would have been the deposit plus all the other costs, we set aside to ensure that we were going to be maxing out our lifetime ISA scheme every tax year because you can only put in four thousand pounds every year 
which worked out to be £333 per month. Coupled with the fact that we already had savings that we wanted to also put forward to the house, we figured out that we could make our target within four years. Now fast forward to February 2020 and my partner actually suggested that instead of going for a 10% deposit mortgage, we actually go for a 5% deposit mortgage. Now we deliberated on this a lot, particularly the main factor being that as a 5% deposit mortgage is a lot more riskier, the banks tend to charge a higher interest rate. But we decided to go ahead with it, which meant based on our savings, we had enough money to buy a property. Now one of the first things that we did was to go onto an online mortgage broker called Habito, and they helped us secure a mortgage in principle. Now for those that don't know what a mortgage in principle is, it is essentially a conditional offer from the lender acknowledging the fact that they are willing to give you a mortgage if the information you've provided them is correct. Now the information you have to provide are things like your salary, your pay slips, um, whether you've got financial dependencies, what your regular outgoings are, etc, etc. Now the reason why you might want to get a mortgage in principle, which is the reason why we got one, was that estate agents and sellers will take you a lot more seriously because you've provided evidence that you do have the funds to secure a mortgage. So we called up a few estate agents and they noted down what our criteria was for our house. And yeah, they booked us in to see a few properties in the following days and weeks. And then March came and the coronavirus hit us and that pretty much wiped off most of the 5% deposit mortgages off the shelves. And the reason being was because these mortgages were seen as a lot more riskier and with fear of an economic downturn, banks started pulling their most riskiest of products, which was the 5% deposit mortgage, unfortunately. And yeah, so we went back to the drawing board and then we realized, yeah, we didn't have the funds to secure a 10% deposit mortgage. We needed a lot more time. But as the months went on, we realized we were actually saving a lot of money because we weren't actually doing anything. We weren't going to work, we weren't going out for dinner, we weren't going to the cinema or going to restaurants or just doing general activities. So our saving rate pretty much skyrocketed. And fortunately for both of us, our jobs were fairly secure. And so yeah, after the first month of the lockdown, we actually figured out what our saving rate is. And we used that new saving rate to figure out what that meant for our new 10% deposit mortgage plan. And yeah, we figured out that if we were looking around the 400K mark or less, we could probably get there. So that's what we ended up doing. So we still kept in touch with our estate agents. We adjusted what our criteria was. We tried to look for more cheaper properties. And so yeah, we continued our search and yet yeah, we still didn't find the property that we wanted and then we actually got further good news and that was in the form of our Chancellor Exchequer Rishi Sunak who announced that to help bolster the housing market here in the UK they were going to introduce something called a stamp duty tax holiday and this news meant that we could wipe up up to £7,500 from our budgeting plan. So we redid the maths, went back to the drawing board, and then we figured out that we could actually aim again for the 425, 450 mark with a 10% deposit mortgage and still aim to get the property by November, December time. So yeah, we called back our estate agents, updated our criteria again, and then we started seeing houses within that price region. And then shortly after, we actually came across a two bed masonette flat, which we really, really loved. And we actually put an offer in. The guide price for this property was 450K and we actually met them at 450k. Now I know usually the standard practice is that you try to go less to try and renegotiate the price but because we already met the owner and he had already let us know that he had offers above the 450 mark but he was willing to see all offers because some of the applicants were facing issues with securing a mortgage because of the whole coronavirus pandemic. So yeah, that's what we did. We formally put our offer in at 450K just to see what happens. We had a gut feeling that it was likely gonna get rejected because obviously why would someone who already has a higher offer go with our offer? But we held out hope. And I have to say that during this entire period, we were picturing ourselves living in the property, thinking about what we would do with all the walls, how our new kitchen was gonna look like, what we were gonna do with the garden. We really got carried away and yeah, we just really saw ourselves living there. And yeah, of course, when we got the news back that he did reject our offer, we were absolutely devastated. I think it was because we had been searching for months, seen loads of properties, and this was the first time we actually saw a property that we could see ourselves living in. And there were so many other properties that we had seen and we just weren't getting that same feeling. So the idea of going through that process again to try and find another property like this one, which we thought was a gold mine at that time, 
time wasn't really something to look forward to. So yeah, emotions surprisingly are a big part in the buying process. I'm not really an emotional person when it comes to money, but I have to say that um, I actually found this really difficult to try and separate myself away from a property that I really, really liked. So yeah, we were taken aback by this, but of course we continued our search. And at the same time, we actually secured our mortgage broker and solicitor. By the way, if you are enjoying this video so far, I would really appreciate if you hit that like button down below and also subscribe with the notification bell on. I release a video every single Monday talking about all things personal finance with the aim to help you be better with your money. Now, mortgage brokers are the individuals that help reach out to all of the lenders on the market and secure the best mortgage deal for you. Now, you don't actually need to get a mortgage broker. You can indeed go off and do this yourself. However, we found it incredibly difficult to try and find a mortgage within the coronavirus pandemic. So we thought it was better off in the hands of a professional. So that's why we went with a mortgage broker instead. Now we contacted a few companies and they all came back with some quotes, but then I also managed to have a discussion with a friend and colleague of mine who I knew actually purchased a property earlier this year. And he recommended that I reach out to the mortgage broker that he used. And because we got the contact via a referral, the broker actually wiped off all of the brokerage fees for us. And I believe my friend got a cheeky 50 quid from it as well. So in the end, choosing the mortgage broker was quite straightforward with us. Um, we went with the cheapest one, but not only was he the cheapest, um, he also had a recommendation backing from a friend and colleague of mine. So um, there was no reason why I shouldn't go with him. Uh, and he was absolutely amazing in the process. I just want to say that opportunity now. He works for a company called Mortgage Advice Bureau. I'll be putting a link in the description box down below. If you do want to get his personal contact, uh, feel free to reach out to me privately. Uh, you can contact me on Instagram or catch me on my emails, which is on the About Me page. So once the broker was secured, we secured a solicitor around about the same time. Now for a solicitor, there's no way of going around it. You do need to have one when you want to purchase a property. There is a whole host of legal checks and legal documents that need to be signed. And these can only be done by a professional. So again, we reached out to a few solicitor companies and they came back with their quotes. I also reached out to another friend who purchased their property a few years ago. And I remember them raving about how good their solicitor was. So I managed to get the solicitor contact from them. And and the quote that she gave um, wasn't actually the cheapest out of all the other ones. It was actually mid range, but I was willing to pay the extra premium because I had the backing of my friend to say that she was a very good solicitor. Because when we were doing our research, one of the major concerns that everyone has when it comes to trying to buy a house is making sure that their solicitor is a good one because there are some that aren't really on the ball and that extends what is already a long process into a very long housing process. So again, we went with her and I'm glad we did because true to my friend's word, she was absolutely amazing during the entire process. Uh, she works for Access Law. I'll be putting some details in the description box again. And again, if you want to get the personal contact details, reach out to me as well. I should also mention that neither the solicitor or mortgage broker firm are sponsoring this video. I'm just purely giving them a shout out because they did a great service for me and I'm sure they'll do a great service for you if you wish to go with them. So now we're in the month of July and we still hadn't seen a, another property that we really liked. Uh, the market itself had become quite stagnant. We were noticing a lot of properties were staying on the market for a very long time and we weren't seeing many new ones. Um, so we went back to the drawing board and we talked about perhaps maybe looking a little bit further west than we originally planned. We were originally looking in the central Ealing area, but we thought maybe we go a bit further out to see what kind of properties they have. And yeah, so when we did that, we saw a whole flood of new properties. And one of the properties was a three bed house, which was within our budget. So I immediately contacted the estate agent and got a viewing for the very next day. And my gosh, when we saw it, we were just blown away by the sheer size of the place compared to all the other flats that we had seen. And this was a house, not even a flat. Um, so it, it was ticking pretty much all the boxes. The only thing was that it was very outdated and it would need a bit of renovation but we were absolutely fine with that and so yeah we put in an offer we put in an offer slightly less than uh, the asking price the asking price was 450 we went in at 430 uh, and that was rejected they let us know that they already had offers at 450 and some of which had already gone beyond the asking price as well but we did have one trick up our sleeve so in terms of the scenario of the house it's a bit of a sad story it was actually on the market 
market because the owner of the property had passed away earlier this year and there was a lot of stuff that needed to be gotten rid of in this house uh, and there was a lot of stuff and so as part of our offer we said that we would be putting in 450 because obviously we couldn't go higher than that because we were restricted by the lisa but they didn't have to clear out the house we would take care of that ourselves they can go in obviously and take out anything that they wanted but anything that they wanted to leave we would deal with our estate agent actually told us that we were the only ones with this offer everyone else were insisting that the property had to be cleared and so I think it was maybe two or three days later and yeah we got the call saying that the owners or I guess the next of kins had accepted our offer so yeah so once we got the offer we were incredibly excited I don't actually remember what we even did I think we just jumped around and immediately told all of our friends and family so once that was done that was obviously a big milestone to hit obviously there was still a bit more stuff to do the next stage was to actually book in a building surveyor now the reason why you would want to get a building surveyor is that they will bring someone to your house and they will do all kinds of structural checks to your property so they'll try and look for problems on the roof if there's any signs of damp or any other damages uh, that might be of concern because if they do find anything major that this could come out of cost to you when you actually buy the property so uh, and if there is obviously something major you can then use this as a negotiation tool back to the seller saying that okay they found a massive problem it's going to cost me this much let's negotiate the asking price to this much as well thankfully on our report everything pretty much came back fine there were only a few minor problems that came back but what I will say is that when you do get your report I remember when I saw our report I thought it was like the worst thing ever um, and that was because because they can't really prove anything without actually ripping out the furniture or the floorboards and actually going onto the roof they will caveat absolutely everything so just be aware of that fact when you do get your report so once our report came back fine and we told our estate agent to let the sellers know that we were happy with the report we then immediately contacted our mortgage broker and and then he started off the paperwork to apply for a mortgage. Now, during this discussion, he had already put forward some mortgage products to us. There was one in particular with HSBC that we were happy with. So we gave him essentially the go ahead to apply for this mortgage. And yeah, the turnaround time on this mortgage, I think was about 10 days. That's what HSBC advised. And so yeah, we had to essentially just wait for our mortgage to come through. So 10 days eventually passed and we still hadn't heard anything. And yeah, even our mortgage broker didn't have an update Date. he was just advised from HSBC that due to coronavirus and limited capacity of staff uh, the turnaround time was just going to be a little bit longer uh, but then it was day 15 and we got a call from our broker who confirmed that HSBC actually pulled their mortgage and this was due to coronavirus factors because banks were limiting the amount of funding they were giving to risky products such as the 5% deposit mortgage this also extended to the 10% deposit mortgage as well I remember reading loads and loads of articles about 10% deposit mortgages being increasingly difficult to get hold of. And so I was a bit concerned, but the mortgage broker found us another mortgage deal with Platform, which I believe is a part of the cooperative bank. And we, again, gave him the go ahead to apply for that mortgage. The interest rate wasn't as good as HSBC, but we felt we couldn't really be choosy. It was a two year fixed mortgage, which meant that it wasn't really bad news as long as we remortgaged at the end of the two years. So that was all done. And then I, I don't believe it was even 24 hours, but the next day, uh, the cooperative bank or platform confirmed that they pulled that mortgage product too. And yeah, I was absolutely devastated. I was getting a bit nervous um, because I thought, okay, crap, what if we don't find a mortgage? We ended up resorting to contacting other mortgage brokers and even contacting lenders ourselves to see if there was anything else available on the market. Um, but they all told a similar story. Uh, the 10% and 5% deposit mortgages just were nowhere to be found. And then I think maybe a few days later, um, our broker said that there was a new product from Nationwide, which was now available, which had a lot more funding and Nationwide itself is a building society. So their business is mortgages. So I felt a bit more confident when we applied for that one, but I did hold my breath <laughs> just in case something, because if that one went wrong, um, I wasn't really sure what we were gonna do um, because we did have our estate agent calling us saying that the sellers were getting a bit concerned that they hadn't heard from us for about two weeks about 
what we were doing with our mortgage. Uh, we were just honest. We let them know that we were facing difficulties because of the coronavirus pandemic, but we had a mortgage application in process with Nationwide and hopefully we would hear from them soon. And thankfully, I think it was two weeks in, we got confirmation from our broker that our application was actually being processed this time, which usually means if all your paperwork and checks come back positive, you will secure the mortgage. Unfortunately for us, our mortgage application took a very, very long time to process. And again, this was due to the coronavirus pandemic. And we were getting a little bit concerned because when we made our new plan, we originally planned for it to be at the very beginning of November, uh, just to allow for some building work to go on so that we can move in at the very beginning of the new year. Now, as our mortgage process was taking a long time, we contacted our solicitor to try and get as much of the paperwork done as soon as possible. So with the solicitor, they do a variety of checks to your property and these do actually come at a cost. So you really want to ensure that you do have the mortgage before you put any more money towards a property that you might not even potentially get. We understood the risk and we went with it anyway just to try and save on our time to try and meet our initial time frame and I'm kind of glad we did because I remember having a conversation with my boss who was also at the same time buying a property he had already got his mortgage approved and he was at the solicitor check stage and the waiting time for him at that time and that was around about October um, was about two to three weeks and when we did it in September um, I think the turnaround time was about one week so yeah that was definitely a good call from us to try and uh, to push that earlier but it does come with a risk so I wouldn't suggest you do that either unless you're absolutely confident you're gonna get the mortgage or again if you are under similar time frame constraints so now we are at the very end of October and we finally got the confirmation from Nationwide that our mortgage had been approved which was a huge sigh of relief for me I'm not gonna lie I was a bit panicked just because from what I read online two months turnaround isn't what normally is supposed to be and considering that we had already experienced two mortgage product pools I was a bit nervous that this could happen at any point um, but thankfully we got there in the end mortgage process has been approved um, which I told the estate agent and the sellers were obviously very happy with that and so the final stage is pretty much all down to the solicitor now so there's going to be a few bits of paperwork that you need to sign a lot of contracts we also had additional paperwork that we needed to get filled out so our solicitor can get access to our lifetime ISA funds uh, so these need to be done on the original copy so uh, that our solicitor actually sent it through the post we signed everything with a witness and then we sent it back uh, first class stamp with a uh, track and trace system because <laughs> these are important documents and I didn't want them to go missing. So yeah, so that was all done. And yeah, uh, I think it was maybe a week's turnaround and our solicitor confirmed that we were on track to have our exchange of contracts and completion date happen on the same day, which was Friday the 13th. So before the exchange of contract and completion date, you typically need to have building insurance covered from the very moment you get the keys to your house. Now for us, as part of our mortgage contract, it was mandatory that we needed to get building insurance. Now I do believe it is the same for the majority of mortgage products but do check yours uh, once you get to this stage. So our mortgage broker actually provided us with a contact to reach out to someone who can help us secure uh, building insurance for our property. And this can actually be done last minute. We did it literally the day before we were set to close. I think it took about an hour on the phone with the contact and he literally just did the whole documentation process for us uh, from his end. And we, yeah, we got the building insurance covered uh, to start on the very next day. Also at the same time, you may want to consider getting life or mortgage insurance just in case one of you, if you are a couple or yourself, fall ill or indeed pass away. And so then Friday came and I remember we literally did nothing but check our phones and emails constantly to make sure that we hadn't missed an email or a voice message. And obviously with it being Friday the 13th, the unluckiest day of the year, something had to have gone wrong and yes, something did go wrong. There were some documents from the seller side which hadn't arrived to their solicitors so we weren't able to exchange contracts and complete which means we wouldn't be able to get the keys. So we were then advised that we were likely to be able to complete now on the following Monday. Monday came and the document still hadn't arrived. Then it became Tuesday, it still didn't arrive. Wednesday, still didn't arrive. And then Thursday, we got a call saying that the documents had arrived, exchange of contracts had been done and it was completed, and we could go to the estate agents and collect the keys. So yeah, I think me and my partner, we immediately just jumped in the car, went straight to the estate agent uh, when we were presented with the keys and a lovely bottle of champagne. Uh, it's a shame I don't like champagne, but I appreciate the thought. And then yeah, we went immediately to our new house 
and got started on the clearing out. So yeah, so that's the entire housing process. So from the moment that we actually got the offer accepted from the sellers to when we actually got the keys, that was a total of four months that we had to wait, which considering that neither of us were in a chain, that was a considerably long time. And that was obviously due to coronavirus factors that obviously couldn't be helped. So now having gone through the process, the key takeaways that I would want to share with you is number one, you do really need to have some patience. The entire process of buying a home for you to live in is quite a lengthy one from, from the budgeting and planning phase that I did three and a bit years ago um, to looking for properties to actually getting one accepted and then obviously the mortgage process itself can be quite long. Number two is please don't be surprised if you actually find it quite an emotional roller coaster as well. I've obviously explained our experience when we found that two bed masonette flat. And honestly at that point in time I was almost convinced that we weren't going to be able to find a property to beat it. Um, obviously I'm kind of glad that we never got that property because if I was chosen a two bed flat masonette and for the same price get a three bed house um, for me I would obviously want to choose a three bed house and obviously don't be afraid to change your plan I have spoke on many occasions how we went back to the drawing board and changed it from a 10% deposit mortgage to a 5% deposit mortgage plan uh, we changed the guide price we changed the location all to try and find that perfect house and obviously one of those changes which was the change in location obviously helped us find our dream home our dream casa our dream something <laughs> I don't know Cool, so that's it for this week's episode. Let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts are. Let me know as well if you also shared a similar experience when buying a property during the coronavirus pandemic. And of course, if you found this video really useful, I would really appreciate if you smash that like button. That does wonders for the growth of my channel as it helps the algorithm. And yeah, I release a video every single Monday. So if you wanna keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button as well. See you later.